Did you hear that they've now started talking about, you know how they talk about um, uh, fiscal tightening? Yeah. Have you heard about this? Yeah. But now this? they're tightening where, they, where there was um, a loosening of, of, the, of the fiscal. Of the kind fiscal of lend space. as much money as you like. What was that theory called? That they talk about um, quantitative easing. Quantitative easing. Now they're talking about quantitative tightening. Right. Who? This wouldn't be in South Africa, sure. No, no. This is politicians in America. Right. They're trying to. They're trying to uh, reel back in an economy that they printed that they billions let run and loose. billions of dollars into, and just thought everything would be fine. Yes. 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 I mean, I. You know, I'm, there's I'm, a new theory in economics, but I'm, it's a rubbish theory. I'm constantly on the money with this because you know. <laughs> Because of what it is that we do and where we raise capital, yes, when they make decisions like this, it affects us. I look. One of the problems with politicians is that they run experiments. Politicians, in my mind, are like they they're like these doctors or these scientists that go into a lab and run an experiment, then they leave before the results come out. <laughs> so they're not invested in the outcome of the yeah. experiment, and they don't care how much damage is done. Now, this is exactly the point. So if if you are if you're any scientist of any repute, if you're running an experiment, you're going to be charged with the responsibility over that experiment. You're going to have to publish a paper going, this is what I did. These were my assumptions. This is how the experiment made manifest. These were the outcomes. And here are my recommendations and learnings. To the next person, don't do these things. Politicians don't bear that responsibility. So I can print money for a term. Mm. And by the time the repercussions of that come in, I'm gone. I'm, I'm out of office. I'm out of office. And you're seeing that even here. I can try things and might or might not work, but you know, well, life happens. Well, Next. I think a lot of people held out a huge amount of hope that this president, having had some experience in business, right? and I mean, you would be right to, I think, raise an eyebrow when people say he had experience in business, because really he was the first beneficiary of being politically connected sure. in business. Sure. Whether or not that makes him a good dis businessman or not, he, he is supposedly worth a couple of billion rand. Sure. Um, people held out a hope that maybe this guy would understand those principles of basic economics that you spoke about just yes. now and be able to implement things that would grow the economy, which I think uh, this is uncontroversial. Growing the economy is the best way to make people's lives better. And and is is the majority party slogan not a better life for all? I, lo I love how you I love how you kind of led up to that. I think this is uncontroversial because actually it is. There are some who think you can broaden uh, economic participation without growing the economy. I mean the the mind boggles, frankly. There are some who say we had a, a jobless what is a jobless growth economy, which is true. You just can't have a growthless job economy. Hmm. So, so just because the one happened doesn't mean it's inverse is possible. It certainly doesn't mean you want the inverse. And, and let me ask you this, because people will, people will take from any discussion you and I have yes. a small five-second clip yeah, and they'll and find something that's the most outrageous thing yes, that either yes. of us could say and out of context use it to make it sound like we're just yes. outside the tent pissing in. Yes, okay, two but, elitists having a conversation but with, let's be over clear, the Queen's English. When you talk about the, um, the, cr the curve that you were talking about and those points on that graph earlier, yeah, yeah. you're not just talking about economic growth, GDP. You're talking about society. You're talking about the big picture. Yeah, I mean, so if, if, you, if, you, broaden, if you broaden what it is that you're measuring, which you should do, then, then measure the aggregate the aggregate income per household in South Africa over the past 20 years, that's declined. Mm -hmm. Now, you can of course find somebody who wasn't economically active 20 years ago, who isn't today, and say their life hasn't changed. That is true, right? But on an aggregate basis, what it means when each and every single household is getting poorer, it means every citizen is getting poorer. That means our pensions are getting worse. It means our lives are getting worse. It means our ability to put food on the table is getting worse. So it's not just that that I'm talking about. And it impacts everything, including but not limited to the cost at which you buy bread, the cost at which you get and get maize and cooking oil. These are the basics, right? It's yeah. maize, cooking oil, um, uh, bread, a, a can of pilchards, salt, it impacts your ability to make sure that you can afford those things because a country that's getting poorer affects that country's comparative advantage and affects that country's ability to provide those things for its citizens at a, at a cost at which the citizens can afford to pay for those things. Now, our solution to date is what worries me. Our solution to date has been, well, use, use the fiscal space to provide social spending for the, for the poor and indigent 
so that they can afford those things. That solution has limitations. Unsustainable. And it's unsustainable. It so, has limitations.